سخن هفته لطفا به چینل ما مشترک شوید Have we reached the Ukraine war's moment of truth? Because according to this week's Time magazine covers, the war is unwinnable. Now, a new article by entrepreneur David Sachs makes the case. Joining us now to discuss is partner at Kraft Ventures and contributor at Responsible Statecraft, David Sachs. David, thank you for joining us. Uh, a situation that was long predicted, where Ukraine has no choice but to have a conversation with Russia about what the, the future of, of the contested region will be. Truth is now pouring out. It started with that Time Magazine article. Like you said, Zelensky's own aides and advisors said that he was delusional for this, uh, what they said, messianic belief in their ultimate victory. Uh, one of his advisors said, we're out of options, we're not winning, but try telling him that. But that wasn't the end of it. Then you had this NBC News story basically saying that the war was deadlocked, it was in a stalemate, but even more than that, Officials said that if Ukraine didn't negotiate by the end of the year, uh, the situation would become urgent. You could almost hear the panic in these unnamed officials' voices. Then you had uh, the New York Times just the other day talking about an open rift that's developed between Zelensky and his commander in chief, Zeluzhny. Zeluzhny did an interview with The Economist in which he said the war was a stalemate. Uh, Zelensky disagreed with that uh, in a press conference. And so now the two are openly at odds with each other. I, I think that now it, the, the truth is broken out, which is that Ukraine is not winning this war. The counteroffensive has been a failure. And if they don't start doing something different, uh, they're headed for disaster. Uh, remember that since the counteroffensive began on June 4th, Ukraine has basically been on the offensive for about five months. They've been hurling their troops and weapons at these fixed Russian fortifications now with huge casualties and huge losses. And the thing that the time uh, profile makes clear is that these orders to advance, this insistence on continuing to be on offense, to make progress of even just a few meters a day is coming directly from the office of the president. And what some of the sources say is that even if the U.S. comes through with more weapons, more ammunition and so on, the Ukrainian army does not have the personnel to use them. They say we don't have the manpower. So I think there's a great fear now that if Zelensky continues with this delusional strategy, that the Ukrainian side will collapse. And I, th I think it was always very unrealistic for the Biden administration to promise total support indefinitely for Ukraine. And, and Brianna, I think you're right uh, in mentioning the situation in Israel. The United States has other commitments all over the world. Our resources are not infinite. And in fact, even before the situation in Israel exploded, we had the issue of the problem of the U.S. running out of 155 millimeter artillery shells, the key type of ammunition in this war. This is why the Biden administration had to give cluster bombs to Ukraine, even though a year before it had said that cluster bombs were a war crime. So we already were stretched to the limit, uh, amazingly, in Ukraine. This war has really uh, depleted America's stockpiles and its resources to a much greater extent than I think the Biden administration had ever anticipated. Now we have the Israel situation on top of it. So I think tough choices are ahead for the United States, even if we send them another 60 billion. You know, we can always print more money, but you can't just print more ammunition, and at least not anytime soon. So I do think that the administration is faced with tough choices they didn't anticipate, and they never should have made that promise to Zelensky of total support for as long as it takes. And, you know, the tragic thing here is that if the administration had been honest with Zelensky, maybe he would have taken the peace deal that was mm -hmm. on offer in the first month of this war. They had a deal at Istanbul worked out. It was initial. There was a draft outline. It simply required Ukraine to give up its desire to join NATO. Had the Ukrainians done that, they would have held on to this uh, east portion of eastern Ukraine. They would have held on to the Donbass, and they wouldn't have had these hundreds of thousands of casualties. So the tragedy here is that if the administration had been more realistic, we could have avoided the tragedy of this war. Lutvan, <laughs> Bachayna Lemo, Mushtarak Shavit.